Welcome to the Shifting with Marley podcast. I'm Marley. Thank you for joining me wherever you are. All that I ask of you, the listener, is to have an open mind and an open heart. And in return, I offer you myself. Today, we're traveling back into the quantum realms. We first journeyed into the quantum realms in episode 40, The Game of Being Human. In that episode, we were introduced to the higher level perspective of quantum reality and playing with life. And we dove into seeing life as a grand adventure and talked about the barriers keeping us from living life from this perspective. And we talked about our divine blueprint and our purpose here on earth and how to become conscious creators of our reality. After recording that episode, I felt that the conversation was unfinished. I felt that there was more to say and more to explore. So today we are diving back in with a focus on quantum time and quantum manifestation so that we can step into our full power and claim our roles as true creators and masters of this reality. Back again to guide us on this journey today is Allison Holly. Allison is a channel and awakening guide and author of the books, The Era of the True Creator and Ecstatic Playground. Welcome back, Allison. I love it. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here and talking about one of my all-time favorite topics. <laughs> it's one of my favorite topics too, and I'm so excited and thank you from the bottom of my heart for gracing us with your presence and wisdom for a third time. Oh my God, it is absolutely my honor. You know, I just love being able to share the things. That's one of the biggest things for me is because I wrote into, you know, my life purpose script that I get to be a channel, you know, and I believe we're all channeling all of the time, right? And that this is a large part of my purpose. And so it is one of my absolute favorite things to share the massive amounts of really, really cool information that comes through. I'm like, can I just talk about this stuff all the time? This is my favorite thing. So <laughs> thank you so much for giving me the opportunity and the platform to share. Yes, thank you. And, you know, we finished recording the Game of Being Human episode last month, and there was so much more I still wanted to say and to cover. So just thank you for being willing, you know, to come back again. I'm just so grateful. And you really can't cover the quantum realms in just an hour. <laughs> yeah, I no, it's going to be a real, it's going to be almost a teaser and I can already feel myself getting amped up. Like, okay, we're going to introduce this topic and I can feel that more is going to come through things that I haven't ever heard either. So here we go. Yay. So Allison, <laughs> let's dive right in. You know, in your new book, Ecstatic Playground, you talk a lot about quantum time. So to get us started, can you please tell us a bit about time from the quantum reality perspective? Yes. So quantum is a word. I want to first uh, dive into that. It's a word that's being used in a lot of kind of broad ways, and I'm going to use it in a broad way as well. So quantum really means bigger than, beyond, right? And it also draws us to a specific frequency realm or dimensional vastness that we are going to be talking about. So when we talk about time from a very human perspective, when we talk about it from, you know, the, the physical level perspective, it means something different than it does if we talk about it from the astral realm of perspective. And then when I start to dive into sort of those realms beyond that fifth dimensional, sixth dimensional consciousness, time becomes a, a much broader experience. And as humans right now who are going through these powerful awakening shifts, we're all starting to go into those higher frequency realms consciously, right? We're always existing in multiple dimensions. And as we start to go into those realms consciously, that's when we can start to really play with it. Because 
if we're not aware of it, we don't really know how to play with it. So when I say quantum, that's what I'm talking about. It's the beyond, it's the bigger than, and it's that that very non-linear, beyond non-linear. We'll see if I have the words as we continue recording. <laughs> but you know, I'll just briefly say the reason why we dive into this is because we view time in a specific way from our human perspective. And as we awaken to more and more and more, we need a different model of what time really is from this human experience, because we're still operating in time. We can't fully escape it because we don't want to. We're humans. We dance through the fabric of time in this human experience, but it's a dance and it's a very different experience than what we currently collectively view it as. Mm, Allison, I love you and I love this conversation already. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> oh, talking about time gets me really fired up. And you say in your book that from a higher soul level perspective, the human perception of time is so delicious and we see it as an incredible gift from this soul perspective because our souls came here in part to play with time from the human perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As you were reading that, what it made me think of was when we're babies, one of our favorite like universal games is peekaboo, right? We love surprises. I have this app on my phone. It gives me different um, affirmations that I write for myself throughout the day. And one of my favorite affirmations in there is I love surprises. I love the magical unfolding that my guides present to me. And we play these games of unfolding right from the beginning. We're like, oh, it's hidden. No, it's here, you know, <laughs> and we get to be, <laughs> we get to be these little kids with our full life experience. So here's the game. We're going to kind of lay out the game so that we have some framework to play with in this episode. But we have the game we create before we dive into this lifetime. We create for ourselves our, our template, our blueprint, which is the divine um, frequency projection of who we want to be in this lifetime. And then we jump into this human experience and all of these different events which match certain frequencies, right? It's not as, it's not like one action leads to the next. And these are very, very tight actions. It's pretty broad, but it's based on frequency. And we get to watch these things unfold, right? So we get to plan out, here are the things that I want to learn and experience. And then we plot it in this timeline. And I'm going to talk about timelines because that's a word that's I use it a lot and it's totally inaccurate for the quantum level of time that we're going to be talking about, but the languaging I'm still learning. Right. And then by the time I learn it, we'll just be telepathic. So <laughs> why bother? But <laughs> so we get to play with the unfolding of all of these beautiful experiences and awakenings and learnings. What I was told very early on in my awakening is we are creating it and it has all already happened. So both are happening at the same time. I feel like looking at you, you're just going to like rocket into space with all of these different things. Y'all can't see Marley right now, but she is just loving it. Okay. So <laughs> we get to witness what we are creating that we have already created for ourselves. And it's brand new in the moment that we live it. It's brand new in the moment that we, that we imagine it. It's not even, I'm trying to, you know, broaden the way that this whole creative process works, but it is new the moment that we think it, the moment that we imagine it, the moment that that glimmer of possibility appears to us, that is our creation and it's brand new. And it's what we've already mapped out and essentially, from a quantum perspective, what we've already existed in. So we've just got a lot that we're unfolding through this human experience. And that's the delicious part. That's what we love. 
<laughs> yes, I love that. That makes so much sense. So if time is nonlinear, I'll just use that word. I know that doesn't encompass yeah. it all, but if time is nonlinear, what does this higher quantum perspective of time look like visually to kind of help us understand and wrap our minds around this? Is there an image you've received in channeling? Yes, absolutely. It was really powerful. I started seeing time. I started seeing timelines actually as these whirlpools. So this happened when I was in a cacao ceremony and um, I was looking at a particular interaction with another person. And I went into this visionary state. It was like, I walked through a door and then there were these guides holding almost like these whirlpools, they were as if they were standing in front of cauldrons, but they were these whirlpools. And what it looked like was if you ever watch the weather channel and you see like a, a hurricane forming, that's what it looked like. It was these swirls of energy. And in that particular ceremony, I was told you're not done with the timeline that you created with this person. And I was like, man, I'm ready to be done. Right. Cause there was a lot going on at the time. But that was the first time that I was introduced to what time looks like from this higher frequency perspective. It's not a line. I'm going to share the model of time as it is perceived in different dimensions. So this is fun. Okay. So we've got the 3D model of time, which we can perceive as um, and we can map this um, with mathematics as well, right? So we've got 3D, which you know has the, the third dimensional perspective, but really what it looks like from that perspective is a line with different events plotted on it. We have a start, we have an end, and then we kind of move through time you know, um, along a timeline. We all did timelines when we were in like middle school and high school, like what happened in history? And all of that. And then here's where we are now. And then this is the future. So it's linear. When we move into the astral realms, and a lot of people, when we go through awakenings, we start to witness the astral realms. And that's where we get really tripped out because there's a lot going on in the astral realms, right? Because things become a lot less linear. That's where we move into the model of time actually being more like a fabric. So we've got a fabric and if we can visualize a fabric, and of course, these are, this is my best portrayal of it. Again, like don't take this at absolute value. Okay. But we've got a fabric and we've got these lines moving, you know, from one direction to the other, but now we've got multiple different lines, right? So my timeline, it's this one, but it's also infinite timelines in either direction. So that's where we start to get, oh, the future and the past, it's not so static. The future can be imagined. The past is imagined. We're starting to understand the way that our brains work, where we're literally imagining the past. It's not a concept. We have given ourselves these parameters so that we can function, not because they're true. So, okay, we've got the fabric model. So now we move into fifth dimensional consciousness. And this is really where we start to see the whirlpools and the spiral of time. And again, this is something that I'm still coming into understanding of. So I'm going to bring myself into a little bit of inner silence so that I can hear if more information needs to come through right now. But what I've witnessed about these whirlpools, a lot of it's a, it's a particular frequency of experience. Okay, so we can look at the whirlpools almost like individual frequency lessons, individual frequency experiences. This is why when we form, you know, soul contracts with other people, we enter this sort of vortex with them and it's a spiral. And when we look at it sort of from the top, which is what I was shown in that particular uh, cacao ceremony, I saw that whirlpool right? It's not a line. It's not even a fabric. It is one particular uh, frequency experience that we choose to be in. And these particular whirlpools exist in now the fabric becomes, you know, like 
like a grid work that's in multiple dimensions, right? So if you've ever watched Interstellar, this is a really good movie to start to understand fifth dimensional time, right? In Interstellar, there's the scene where he's, it's like a light grid. And people listening to this, you may have actually seen the light grid. It exists on a different frequency. Here in the human experience, we have multiple frequency. There are different grids that we move within, right? We can call it a matrix. A matrix is simply a structure that we move within. So when we talk about, and this is what's being channeled right now, it's brand new to me and I'm so excited. So we've got that light grid work. And this is where we've got the polarities of, you know, we call it yin and yang or masculine and feminine, right? They're simply polarities. And what I've been shown about those polarities is moving forward as we raise our consciousness, I should say, we're going to start to understand those as light and sound. Now, light has that more linear grid work structure. That is the yang polarity. And sound has that circular or um, global sort of structure. And that is going to be the yin polarity. Okay, so this is where the two interact. When we have the fifth dimensional perspective, when those two interact, what we get is this multidimensional fabric of uh, time timelines or time experiences that we can have. And we have these whirlpools that are plotted within the grid work of our experience, uh, all the possibilities that we've mapped out for ourselves. So we've got these particular frequency um, whirlpools of experiences. And each of us, we've all experienced this. I hear from a lot of people like, oh, it's one year later, I'm going through the same experience, but it looks a little bit different, right? So we get to meet this spiral that's sort of, we call it moving upwards, right? Of the particular frequency that we get to play within. And each of us choose multiple different whirlpools to interact in in this particular lifetime. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Oh my God. Thank you so much for sharing that, for channeling that. That was so fun. And I think that's going to blow a lot of people's minds. And I feel so grateful that, that we that got this so information here today. I just want to witness how the two interact with the grid work and the whirlpools. I haven't been able to see that before. Yay. And there's a visual you shared in your book too, that I want to bring up because it really resonated with me. You say that time is like a slinky, that we can compress or elongate according to our own desires. And this illustrates that time is a toy rather than something serious that controls our existence. Mic drop, mind blown. Just love. I love it. And how funny that, you know, I was just kind of shown the next layer of that, but absolutely those spirals that's a slinky you know and so perfect and within those and the, and you just draw me to the next point on this we're in these whirlpools where it feels like we're repeating lessons but here's where we get to time leaping and things like that we deeply become present and presence is what compresses that slinky to where now instead of an experience being a year away it's right now. In presence, all is now. The man who wrote The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle, you know, he he really introduced us on a collective level to this understanding that all really is right now. And so as we're playing in the expansive human playground, and we do have time that unfolds, we can move into presence to access quantum time and to take time leaps. And really all a time leap is being so present that we don't need to continue relooping the same story again and again. And we can move out of that story into expanded consciousness and then be on the other side of that lesson. And we can enter a, do a different whirlpool. <laughs> Presence is the answer. Always. Oh, so simple. <laughs> it's so simple. Yeah. 
So Allison, if both realities are true or all those realities are true, right? That time is both linear and nonlinear, depending on our perspective, our consciousness and our vibrational alignment. Why do we block the reality of quantum time as humans and choose to experience time as linear and fixed? Like what are some of the barriers and blocks keeping us from this expanded perception of time? Absolutely. Well, one reason is that we really love it. Like we secretly love it, right? We love, you know, it's kind of like playing peekaboo. But when we become human, it feels a little bit scary. We've got these, we don't view things multidimensionally. We get schooled into the human playground where we're like, okay, uh, I'm a limited human. I'm just this experience. I'm, I'm here by myself, actually. There's things that can harm me. This feels really big and scary, right? But we want that experience also so that we can have so many different individual experiences. That's part of, man, we love it. We love to dive into all of the unfolding of it. But some things that block us, as we start to awaken again, we remember what we knew either, you know, right when we were born or right before we were born. And again, I'm saying when or before, those are linear time models of of words, right? So it's like, what do, what do I even say? But essentially all is now and it was before, <laughs> right? Everything is concurrent and it was before. And as we go through these awakenings, we start to remember what we already knew. And that is, oh, I'm eternal. I can't be destroyed. I I can't even really be creative, although, yes, I can at the same time. And those concepts, because we've lived our whole lives with these parameters within the mind, the mind is like, okay, I'm going to believe in the barriers. I'm going to reinforce these barriers. I'm going to tell myself the same story again and again so that I feel like this is real so that I feel safe in this reality, so that I know how to like function as a human. Honestly, when we blow the top off of some of these concepts, we kind of lose our ability to function in some, in some ways. And so there's a reason that we don't all instantly hit, you know, just the all knowing space, because there's some shifting and unraveling that tends to need to occur, it would blow our minds is what I'm trying to say, right? A lot of these concepts would blow our minds. And I mean that in a sort of literal way, we have our minds and our mental structures to reinforce patterns. And we are reinforcing patterns so that we can live a particular way, a particular human experience, a particular series of stories And if we had full consciousness of all of this, we would often, we have a hard time, you know, in, in my round of awakening. And I can't remember when yours started, like, when was that for you? Mm, 2015. Okay. So it was around the same time. And in 2012, when mine really catapulted, it was like, oh, crazy. I saw a lot of people in that wave and a few waves after that literally going into schizophrenia, literally going into places where their mind had broken. And yet the foundation, the framework of you're still safe, you're still eternal to tune into the heart. Like some people did not have that foundation. There were moments when I didn't feel I had that foundation. And when we break down these structures that are holding up the reality that we're living in, it can cause some, what we call damage, right? You know, it can, it can spin our lives out. So we have these structures to help us be human. However, all that being said, there's a reason that the heat is getting so much that the popcorn is popping now, right? Like collectively we're turning into awakened pieces of popcorn. Okay. (laughs) Oh my God. I love that. I love that analogy. Like the heat's on for a reason. It's because we're ready. So just like there's a time or an unfolding of time that's divine for each of us individually, we have these little activation moments where, okay, my frequency is at a point where now it's ready. Now open that window. Now open that gateway. 
We have that on an individual level. We also have that collectively. And collectively, the frequency of the planet reached a certain temperature point. <laughs> at, you know, we, or the frequency reached a certain point, a vibratory point, where we're now going through these waves of awakening. And it's because the energetic grid work of the higher frequencies has now been activated on the planet to the level that we have some structure to move within and we are collectively able to start to let go of some of those old ways of doing it. It's sort of like, let's see, what's a good analogy? I mean, the first thing I can think of is like, it's like having braces and then once uh, your teeth move a certain way, then you actually need to change the braces, right? So we've got this grid work that we were working with then, and it was more dense. And now we're ready for something higher frequency, which is the crystalline structure of the planet. It's really everything as it is, but on a higher frequency. And now we're starting to, you know, our bodies are shifting into that crystalline structure. There's a lot shifting it's just vibrating at a higher rate. This gets me so excited. I'm so excited. And <laughs> you also say in your book that some of these other blocks and barriers, it's partially about externalizing our power to time, meaning if we think things are out of our control and we're kind of like victims to time and these things are all external to our consciousness, it reinforces that illusion that our power is external to us. Yeah, it does. And, you know, it's interesting because I have a friend and we were talking just this morning about that externalization of our power. And when we are operating in those realms, that makes sense. It makes sense, right? You know, a hundred, 200, a thousand years ago, the idea that someone could be enlightened would cause them to get martyred, right? <laughs> Nobody wanted to feel that much responsibility or power within ourselves. We didn't know how to do that. And so now we're awakening like, oh, each of us are God. I get it. Okay. Maybe it's intimidating, but it's not terrifying to the point where we murder each other about. I mean, sometimes yes, but we're moving past that. Okay. We're collectively, we're really making leaps and bounds here, but these structures existed for a reason. We othered our power because when we get into those dense frequency realms, that makes sense. That is normal. We're getting into the realms now where we're starting to awaken to who we are and holding that power, knowing that we have that power. We don't immediately start to think, oh, what am I going to do with this power? We're like, okay, if I'm making choices, not from good or bad, if I'm making choices from knowing that I'm God and that that's beautiful, I, of course, I'm going to choose love. Of course. Right. You know, it's, it's easy. And we're going to view all things very differently. Things look very different from those other frequency perspectives. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it's it's a total perspective shift, right? Mm -hmm. From the structures that we have been living in, right? To the new ones that we're building. And I also want to point out as well, another big block or barrier that I see and that I experience in my own life is the culture and society we live in that perpetuates time scarcity. Because that I don't know, structure that model, I'll say, of time scarcity also keeps us relooping and locked in linear time. Yes. Right. And blocking us from quantum time. Absolutely. And you do talk about that a lot. And I love that you brought that up because so here's something that can kind of calm us all down. Let's dive into time scarcity because it's going to bring it all together. But when we think of time scarcity, it's because we're viewing it from that linear model. So as we talked about before, we've got this slinky model, right? The reason that it feels like things are going so fast now is because we are compressing timelines because we're advancing so quickly. And if it feels like things are moving fast, like we're losing time, it's because we're viewing that from our mind still. 
So we've still got the conception from our mind of a linear time, but now we're functioning within quantum time, which is all is now. It's done the moment that I imagine it, right? And so we're kind of holding both of those perspectives at the same time. So while energetically we're moving very quickly, we're compressing timelines, we're learning things, we're evolving very quickly. At the same time, we're still perceiving it from our mind and our mind is like, wait, where is this time? <laughs> like, ah, right? So we can kind of calm ourselves down this way. This is what, um, you know, right now I'm teaching a, a course called Limitless Creator. And this question comes up like, okay, I have these desires. I'm creating them. I'm manifesting them, so to speak. And I also feel like, oh, I got to get it done right now. This was literally asked yesterday. And I'm like, oh, perfect. If we feel like we've got to get it all done now, if we can just sit and be with ourselves and zoom out, what's the, what's the overall desire that we're feeling? What's the overall overarching desire? And this is how we quantum leap, right? We're like, okay, I have a life purpose. I can feel it. It's so strong. It wants to be actualized. And our mind tells us, okay, here's how you're going to actualize it. On Monday, you're going to do this. On Tuesday, you're going to do this. Oh my God, you're never going to have time for all of this, right? And the, the whole freak out process ends, right? It ends up. And then we freeze because we're just freaked out that we're never going to get it done. And we, we go into a panic response from the quantum model of time. We calm ourselves down. We enter that stillness and we observe the full picture. We become the observer. We become the observer. The observer doesn't jump in with attachment. The observer witnesses. So we're the witness of this frequency that desires to come through us. And from there, we don't do anything. We literally just keep witnessing, right? It's not like, okay, now you've witnessed it. Now go jump into action. Keep witnessing it. Keep witnessing it. Watch how this energy actually dances through you. And you never need to take action again because action is this false premise that we've got to push our way through life. All right, we're in physical bodies. You do act, but I'm trying to take the power away from that word action where we're like, oh, if I don't do this, I'm going to miss the boat. Honey, there's a bazillion boats. They're going to take you there. And in fact, you're going to fly. You're going to quantum leap there when you do this process. You won't need to row your boat, right? Okay, you're going to leap there. Because in this quantum level of time, things are real as soon as we imagine them, perceive them. And then we get to, then we get to dance through it. So hopefully that makes sense. Less action, less action. Let the action be motivated by the dance of the frequency that just wants to move through you inherently because it's who you are. Less action, more witnessing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. That makes so much sense. I want to say that I, I, I want to say that that that's kind of like a mind construct making sense, but it just, it felt resonant. How about that? Um, it felt resonant. So it's basically like we're living in two worlds right now. It, collectively is kind of what you're saying, like in terms of us feeling like time is moving so fast. It's because we're living in two worlds and in that transition period between the two. Is that right? Yes. Yes. I love it. Now you see, I was like, that ties right in. We were talking just before recording, like this feeling of living in two worlds is absolutely a part of understanding time in a new way. We've got our foot in both. And this isn't a judgment call. There's still a real heavy paradigm. And I'm going to speak to this because we need to stop scaring ourselves into doing things that we want to do. <laughs> okay. We don't need to spook ourselves into living the life that we're already built to live. And there are many, many ways that we spook ourselves into that. One is this collective view of the world splitting in half. All we're doing is echoing this demonizing view that we got from Judeo-Christian teachings, okay? 
yes, there are people who are going to choose to go into these higher vibrations. And there are people who are going to choose not to. This is not the same as this idea of going into heaven and going into hell. It feels like hell when we're not conscious of our choices. And that is how it's accurate. And it feels blissful. And it's the experience of being a creator is, wow, really powerful. So that being said, there's this idea that this is really what I want to talk about. There's this idea that the earth is going to split in consciousness, that we're going to have the old earth and the new earth. That's how it looks from the 3D model and the 4D model, where we still believe in othering. We still believe in separation. Okay. What it looks like as we start to live it is a vibration of myself living in two worlds, right? I myself am living in multiple worlds, depending on where my consciousness is. So what we're doing right now is we're starting to see that there are infinite potentials for how everything can occur, right? This is that fifth dimensional perspective where, you know, we've got this grid work and we've just got endless possibility of how things can work out. There are endless versions of me having endless different experiences. Everything is created. And this is really right now, I've started to see this emergence of what's called the law of assumption. It's really the law of attraction viewed from, I think, a more complete perspective. It's really powerful teachings. And that's really starting to get popular. If you haven't looked into it, the law of assumption, it's getting really popular because we're starting to understand these quantum time perspectives, right? So in that, a lot of people are saying there's infinite potentials. So there's infinite versions of me living infinite realities. The way that it's been shown to me is that while there are infinite potentials, what makes me real? What makes me more real than the other potential Allison living out there? It's focus. Okay. So essentially we've got these echoes, infinite echoes of our own unique frequency potential, living all of these different things. Guess what makes this exact experience that I feel like I'm conscious in right now, what makes it real? is my focused awareness of this moment of time, of my choice in this focus. I get to choose where my, it's almost like coagulation, right? All of my energy starts to come back into, it's this moment, it's this experience. Now here's where we time leap. If I focus on something else, if I learn to quiet myself, bring myself into the eternal now, and I focus on a different perception, I focus on a different awareness, I imagine something new, I can leap to that creation and have that be my current moment experience, right? So you can see this is like the law of attraction, but instead of believing that things need to come to us, we recognize that we actually leap in consciousness. Now, of course, everything is here and now, and you know, but if we can kind of perceive I can completely change my reality by focusing my awareness on the place in the fabric, the multidimensional fabric where the reality that I desire exists. When I focus there, I become that. And that's where we get this living in two worlds, right? So if you're having the experience of living in two worlds, it's because you've got that split focus. And this is something that um, Esther Hicks channels a lot with Abraham. Split focus. You're pulling in two different directions. So I've got some of my focus here and some of my focus here and some of my focus here. And that means that the fullness of me is not able to fully manifest in one of those realms. I'm going to manifest a little bit over here and then I'm going to be pulled to manifesting this over here. So we focus we bring all of our awareness and and we get there through meditation, right? Through presence. It's like, we know the tools. We've got a new language and a new understanding of what we're doing with those tools. 
you know, even um, Native American or indigenous cultures, a lot of um, indigenous cultures that I've heard, it's like soul retrieval. This is what we used to call it. Now it's an aspect of shadow work or, or healing from trauma. It's all the same. The fracturing of the self is a split awareness. And what that does is it literally puts us on different places within the the fullness of time. We are split. Our awareness is split. If we have a trauma, part of ourselves is re-looping that experience. This is true of like people who've passed on. If there's a ghost, they're re-looping a moment in their timeline. There's a frequency aspect of them that's re-looping this experience. And so they're still living in the same house and timelines start to overlap. It's because we're fractured. So when we can gather it all together, that's when we can be really powerful creators. And that's why meditation. And that's why, you know, sitting in stillness. And that's why finding that inner stillness. And as I have been really excited to talk about lately, it's like, this is where we move into six dimensional perspective of that Dr. Strange level. You know, there's a reason in the Dr. Strange movies, consciously or not, that there's the ancient one who knows Kung Fu or whatever beautiful art form of focus that they know because we have to bring ourselves into that zero point consciousness in order to really create. And that's that eternal stillness. And that is where all aspects of ourselves are gathered. So then we've got the energy. We're not fractured. We've got the energy to move forward. I'm like thinking of a billion people who talk about this. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about it. So there's a lot pointing us all in this direction. Gather the energy, be still in this moment, focus, and then you can actually create. Mm, You're speaking to my soul right now. Thank you so much. I I love this. And it's Mm. basically seeming to me almost like a new spiritual technology that you're tapping yeah. into technology, not being a, you know, a, f- a physical, tangible thing, a spiritual technology. It's like next level. It's new. And we've had it all along. <laughs> we've had it all along. And here's the beautiful thing. We have stages in ancient times. It's like, Oh, that person was levitating. Is that real? Or is that, yeah, it's real. They're by locating. Is that real? Yeah, it's real. It's just that one or two people were the only ones that were in the place of stillness within where they were able to tap into these technologies. We are coming into an era where we're all going to be able to do it because it's normal for those frequency realms. It's just that we're kind of in the middle right now, right? We're just like, we're like the way that my guides have showed me, they're like, I'm like a toddler right now, right? It sounds like this really powerful new information, but when I really tap into it, it's like, How does a toddler pick up a fork to feed themselves? That's how I feel when I'm playing with these technologies. It's like, oh man, from the human perspective, I'm just trying to pick up a fork and feed myself. (laughs) So basic. And yet it is for the collective, for this particular earth experience, it's, it's pretty new, but we're doing it like, and we're busting through fast and powerfully, right? Because we're learning it in that compressed time. I have the biggest smile on my face. We're doing it. <laughs> We're doing it. We're getting there. We're doing it. And I, I just want to point out something from your book that really resonated with me. Kind of back to that whole new paradigm, old paradigm that we're talking about that in between. You point out that in quantum time, there is both time for everything and a time for everything. Yes. Yes. Because it all exists. It all exists. We've got time scarcity because, okay, now it's this moment. Okay, now it's this moment. And it's as if we've lost the last one. You know, toward the beginning of my awakening, one of the things that I was guided to do, and there's still like a part of my human self that's like, oh, that's, I really wish that I hadn't. I mean, that's kind of hard. I was guided. I had memory boxes of all of these old pictures, my old yearbooks, everything like that. And I was guided to throw it all away, to get rid of all of it, as if just let the past go and let it be now, let everything be now, you know? And so I share that to say, 
we are moving into a model where we cannot lose the past. The past is now. In fact, if you have had difficult experiences or happy memories, you know that the past is now. Think of something happy that happened in your past. Well, there it is. It's right now. (laughs) You know, that trauma that's living in your body. It hasn't left. It's not in the past, my love. It's right now. It's right now. And we can change the past just like we create the future. And we can create the future before we even get there by relooping our past. Right? Or we can choose to leap into a new experience. So all of this is malleable. It's all malleable. It's all flexible. Mm -hmm. So Allison, you say in your book, you acknowledge that all of this is very difficult for the human ego logical mind to conceptualize, right? You acknowledge that. The infinite nature of time is difficult for our minds to grasp. And our ego minds want to keep us relooping, right? And staying in linear time because like you said, it's safe and comfortable there. And the ego mind is also scared of the unknown, right? You say in the book the key is to operate from the universal mind or the higher mind. So -hmm. can you tell us how that fits in, what that is, and how to kind of quiet that egological mind and start operating from that higher mind? Yeah, absolutely. It's moment by moment. How ironic that I'm saying it that way. (laughs) Because here's the reality. We're going to be done recording this. I'm going to leave here. I'm going to have a brand new experience that I haven't experienced yet. I might interpret it as like, oh, that's difficult. Or I might, who knows? I might be elated. Wow. What an awesome surprise, right? So we're still existing in time. So it makes sense. And I'm going to say this is the first step. It makes sense that we're relooping. It makes sense that we're doing all of these things that we, that are coping mechanisms. It makes sense that we don't understand that we're God. It makes sense that we feel powerless. All of these things make sense. And so when we encounter these moments where maybe we're disappointed in ourselves, like, oh man, I did it again. You know, like I'm relooping. Step one. It's okay. This is literally what you jumped into. This is the experience that you jumped into and it makes sense. And it is the model that we have been living. So when we do that, this is the crazy thing. When we actually feel gratitude or feel love for that moment that we were previously resisting because it was wrong, quote unquote wrong, when we just be with it, that actually takes us to step two if we're giving a linear model, which is, it brings us into presence. It actually quiets us. What we resist persists, right? We push it away and we're like, it just keeps coming back because what we're really doing, you know, what we're doing with shadow work, what we're doing with all of it is we are bringing it in. We're not getting rid of it. We're bringing it in. We're bringing it into oneness, oneness with myself. I'm having a moment. You know what? I'm just going to be here with it. I'm going to be here with it right? And that's the portal, right? Present moment is zero point, right? Look at the number zero. It's literally a circle with a hole in the middle. It's a portal. So bring yourself to stillness. That's zero point. And when we do that, then we can really actually move and we can actually create, but yeah, just the first step is just allowing that to be the reality that we've been living in. It's like, okay, okay, here's what it is right now. And I'm going to be still with it. And I'm going to bring myself as much to neutral neutrality within as I can, you know, and the observer mind is natural for us. It's as natural as the monkey mind. And so we can also know that it's like, oh, it feels so hard to meditate. Actually, it's really easy. That's a story. If we didn't perpetuate that story, you'd be like, oh, wait, I've just been telling myself that story because I'm afraid of how powerful I am. (laughs) And then we're like, okay, see how good that feels. Sit still, be still, 
ah, nothing needs to be done. There's nothing urgent. We're right here, right now. Okay. Right. It's something that we need to experience. It's not something that I can, other than sharing my own experience with it, I can't deliver that. Right. But you're God, you can create it. You can deliver that to yourselves. You know, it, being in that observer place is as natural as being in the frantic place. Just find that different normalness once again. And you also say in your book, other keys to this are letting go of the mental desire to have a static reality. Mm -hmm. Right. And when we open to perceive this higher mind, like you already said, stillness and pause help us get there because when there is a moment of pause within the mind, it breaks it open. Yes. And that's when we start to see beyond the confines of time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, you know, it's really powerful because sometimes with um, meditation, we're all wiggly and it's hard to get into it. But when we reach that moment of stillness, it's like everything opens up for us, you know, and there are a bazillion techniques for getting into presence because this is a teaching that's as old as time, <laughs> right? <laughs> is, is meditation, being in stillness, listening to your inner knowing, you know, those are all, those are all teachings that have been around for forever. And so there are many, many ways to enter that stillness. And it can be as simple as tuning into the breath. It's so simple. And from there, everything opens up, you know, you touched on from that reading that the, what I call the mental matrix, which is just this tight web of presuppositions and beliefs and all like all the programs that's that's the right word the programs and we're just like what? all those programs they just built this like oh now we're just moving through reality like these robots right because I already know what I'm going to do when I do this and and there is definitely a place for consistency trust me but I'm not talking about consistency what I'm talking about is living by pre-written programs when we can find that stillness we actually find the route that suits our divine template in the most aligned and harmonious way. So Allison, how do we know when we are operating from the higher mind and experiencing quantum time? What does that like look like and feel like? What are the signs to look out for to know that we've reached those states? Yeah. Well, there are signs that we're operating from the mind and that tends to be anxiety. It tends to be fear of any sort, you know, I don't know. Donnie Darko is one of my favorite movies. Right. And in there, they're like, it's not so simple as love and hate or wait, love and fear. Right. It's, it's such a beautiful movie. But anyway, if you've ever watched it, you know, there's like this really powerful scene where it's like, they map out love and fear. And he's like, no, there's more to it than that. That's true. And I want to tell you, it is kind of just that simple. <laughs> it, it can kind of be distilled into, do we feel fear or do we feel love? And that's okay. Like it's all of the experiences are okay. You know, and the moment that we feel okay with it is actually, it's like, that's our portal into the divine love. Right. So I'll tell you what quantum time feels like. Oh, it's so exhilarating. When I have moved into deep levels of presence, it's almost hard to catch my breath, surprisingly, because what's happening is when we're living by programs, we're actually closing off our circuits to the divine that's always existing within and around us. So when we're in presence, those circuits open, all of our channels start to open and we get light just flowing into us. It's an ecstatic experience. You know, um, in my first book, The Era of the True Creator, I talk about pure form consciousness, 
which is three parts. It's the heart open to giving and receiving divine love. It's the mind in its observer state, quiet, receiving. And it's the body in its ecstatic state. So when we are in pure form consciousness, which is that pure presence, it's ecstatic. You know, these moments and and moments become a, a collective until it becomes regular. So I would say I live more in my ecstasy now than I did 10 years ago. You know what I mean? When, in my awakening, when I started to have those rushes of pure presence and ecstasy, it was like really overwhelming to where now it's more comfortable to be, to have all those channels open, to be in that space, you know? So it feels amazing. I guess <laughs> it feels really good to be in quantum in quantum creation where everything happens very quickly and very succinctly and in so much more harmony than all of this pushing and effort that, man, it's hard to move out of effort, but that's, it's funny. It's like, that's the work is moving away from work. You know, <laughs> that's where we are right now. And trust me as someone who is really like, can be very mentally driven. I get there. Like I, I do get there a lot and it is hard sometimes to be like, put it down. It's all happening. It's all working, you know? <laughs> So fun. I love talking about this. And you also point out in your book, time becomes more flexible when we're in these in these states. So it may feel like it's slowing down or speeding up. We may see the entirety of a situation in one download. We might be able to see the future, which is fun. Painful moments may be shorter lived. The speed of evolution amps up. And we begin to appreciate all that is by allowing it to be what is without attachment. Yes. Yes. That key word right there at the end, attachment, right? That's what keeps us relooping. That's what keeps us in the old stories. And it's so natural for us. So we can just be really gentle with ourselves. And we get to have these really powerful moments more and more and more and more where we're in that expanded level of time. I want to say something about brain waves. This is a different thing that we can kind of start to recognize uh, what it feels like to be in this ecstatic quantum time. So when people have done studies, we've all heard stories of like, okay, I had to lift the car off of my toddler, right? Where we go into these moments where there's an emergency and we get into a heightened response state. What's happening is actually our brain waves are reaching gamma waves. We're in gamma, gamma wave state. And that's where we get that superhuman ability. What people describe, and this is something that I've had happen without it being like a state of emergency. It's part of what I've experienced through my awakening. Is there's such a deep level of presence that everything slows down. And when everything slows down, we can think, I'm referencing a lot of pop culture, but maybe that's because I like it. <laughs> There's a movie called Limitless and I love, love, love this movie. And in the movie, he like, they developed a, p a pill that helps you access like 90 or a hundred percent of your mental capacity versus like the 10 or whatever percent that we, all of that, right? But you access your full mental capacity. And in the movie, the same thing happens. He is able to see everything in a single moment and he's able to respond in a sort of superhuman way. And that's what happens when we reach those gamma wave states, okay? So we already have that potential within us. And this is something, like I said, that I've experienced several times in my awakening without needing to trigger like a fight or flight. However, as I've been channeling kind of recently bringing through a lot of these understandings of these human technologies and our ability to exist on these higher frequencies, they are teaching me a lot. They, my, my guidance team, my higher self is teaching me a lot about 
you know, it's similar to these gamma wave states. And here's how, you know, you can activate it without it needing to be like an emergency response. But I bring that example up because it's not so far off. It's it, it's Doctor Strange, but it's not a comic book. It's like, this is actually real life. And if you're curious about these things, one thing that I would do is like, you know, look up stories of people who have lifted refrigerators or lifted cars or somehow moved exactly where they needed to move to help an emergency situation. It becomes time slows down. And it becomes very clear. Everything becomes very clear, right? Um, and a lot of times people who are in those places, it's they're not feeling panic. They're actually just feeling like, well, this is just what I needed to do, right? You know, so I like to play with that. Kind of look at some of these stories. Let yourself know that these are things that are possible for all of us. Endless possibilities. Yes. So Allison, in these quantum realms, in the realm of quantum time, how is manifestation different than in the current denser physical reality forms of manifestation? Well, you know, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful that we have this, I'm going to call it a technology of understanding how to manifest and that we, that this is something that our collective is really starting to um, become aware of. And now that sort of next layer that we're always manifesting, it's not something that we do sometimes is we're always creating, we're always manifesting. It's just how conscious of it are we. So when we go into quantum level, we are more conscious because we're more present and therefore we're able to, um, move things in a more conscious and aware way, you know, we can change things within a moment as opposed to being like, like I'm manifesting, like I'm manifesting, right? Instead of it being this big feeling of effort, we're starting to witness that it's really where our consciousness is. Now, what I talked about a little bit ago was that things are real the moment that we imagine them. Okay, so this is something we are really starting to understand now. We have different layers of reality. We have different layers of um, creation, right? So up here, this layer of reality, and it's not linear, right? But in the quantum realms of reality, things function differently than they do in the more dense physical layers, okay? So the truth of creation in those higher frequency layers Everything is an imagination. Everything is imagined until it becomes denser and denser and then physical. That's why thoughts are things because we go into the astral realms for the thoughts. Everything as it's being created in the physical sort of travels this um, pathway of becoming more and more dense. So our imagined reality then becomes our thoughts and our feelings and then becomes our physical reality. So we kind of funnel it down and down and down. So when we move into quantum time, everything is now. And if you've ever watched the movie, The Secret, there's this beautiful scene. And of course, more is always revealed. So there's going to come a time where everything that I'm sharing right now is going to be like obsolete. And so I'm not knocking this movie, but I am saying that in this movie, it was all that we could handle at the time. but. In the movie, they talk, there's a time delay. There's a time delay. Thank goodness there's a time delay. And then they show like an elephant pooping in your living room because you just thought of an elephant, right? (laughs) So I want to tell you that because time is so vast in the quantum realms, there is no such thing as a time delay. What we perceive of as a time delay is actually our integration of what we are imagining. That's it. And if I can imagine something and instantly I already believe it, then it is literally instantly already there. And if I can't, then that's the timeline unfolding that I get to live and have all these experiences in learning about. But I, you know, I've had my own experiences where I've imagined something and it is instant. The truth is that if that's all that's always happening, we're imagining this right? It's an imagined creation. It's just, it feels really real because it feels believable to me right now. 
but other things that don't quite feel believable that I'm not practiced in imagining they will not be real until I feel comfortable with them being real. And then as soon as I feel that, as soon as I experience that and embody that, I, it's not even about belief and it's not even about feeling. It's about the truth of it being comfortable flowing through. That's it. Wow. So to summarize, tell me if I've got this right. In the old paradigm, it was about force and effort and action. And if I do X, then Y happens. But in the quantum realms and the new paradigm, it's about vibrational alignment. And in the perception of quantum time that all is now, everything that we wish for has already occurred and conscious manifestation is merely aligning with this knowledge and allowing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to reiterate aligning with something. It doesn't mean you have to believe it. And it doesn't mean you have to feel it. And this is where we're moving beyond the concepts that are being delivered with the law of attraction. The law of attraction is true and it's leading us to these next steps. Okay. You don't have to feel it and you don't even have to believe it. It's simply aligning to the frequency. That feels really big, Allison. And you also point out in the book, the timing of unfolding of events is only based on the time it takes for us to align internally. Correct. Yeah. 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 And that's the game. (laughs) That's the game. And there are certain things within my personal divine blueprint, which I have said, "Mm, maybe when I'm 50, I want to be at that vibrational place. Right. So it's not even about like, Oh, if I learn more and I'm better, I become better and I become better. Like we've got this hierarchy. It's actually, sometimes I just want to be at a certain place within my own human existence to have a certain experience. You know, it can, it can be neutral like that. And from the higher perspective, it actually just is. So it's our vibrational alignment that determines the flow. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And of course, how present we are. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. That's the goal. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. And that's the game. That's the game. It's fun. You know, let's enjoy the fact that we get to unfold things. Let's, let's enjoy like life's surprises. And yeah, sometimes my aunt and I, we used to joke around like, okay, when you get into heaven, we're going to, we're going to look back on this experience and we're going to be like, oh, remember when this happened and you made this face and you were like, "Ah," right? (laughs) It's like, we're going to have a different perspective of these surprises that we encounter in our lives. And yes, sometimes in this moment, while we're living it, it feels hard. And I'm not taking away from that. And we don't need to take away from that. It's okay. And we can be present with everything and find a completely new perspective of all of it. And we're just going to have the most amazing time with anything that happens because we're going to witness it differently. Wow. Complete perspective shift. Witnessing it all differently. Mm -hmm. Just one quick question that I have regarding all of this. If what we are manifesting is our desires, do we need to know clearly and specifically what we want to manifest and make reality? And do we need to know clearly and specifically what our desires are for this quantum manifestation to work? Does that make sense? Like how specific do we need to be in order to make these things a reality? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Another way that we can start to look at this is everything is frequency. And I know that's really, really broad, right? So we tend to think of these desires as like, I want a blue car. And that's true. That is a desire. But we're getting closer to the heart of those desires when we look at the frequency of it. 
Okay. So that's, that's where we kind of go into that stillness and we witness the frequency and we witness, right? We witness that gives us that bird's eye view. We have a broad perspective and we're like, okay, we see it. So sometimes we're going to desire very specific things. I have specific desires. I have also had visions of very specific things happening in the future. That being said, some people have really specific things that they want to manifest and some and we have a combination of both, specific and broad. When we follow what we desire, we are going to be getting closer and closer and closer to the truth of who we are and that's how we manifest what's in our template, our blueprint, right? So, following our desires a lot of times when I talk about this, people are like, dude, I cannot follow my desires. That's how chaos happens. Right? So how do we know what's a core desire? Well, first of all, I, I personally really like to tell people every desire is God given. And I don't care how crazy it seems. And I don't care how dark it seems, right? Because if you have a desire, that's really what we would name bad. All that means is it's trying to lead you to the truth of who you are, okay? And when you get closer to the truth of who you are, that desire is going to sing in harmony with everything in existence. So sometimes we're afraid of, you know, following our desires because we're like, well, that's just going to create chaos. Well, then focus on the vibration. Focus on the vibration of who you want to be. And from that place, from our vibration, when you follow your desires, they are going to be aligned with the truth of who you are. I also really, really, really don't want people to be afraid of their desires if they're not fully aligned, because that's how we get into freeze mode. And that's how we end up just not doing anything. I think the people who are the most afraid of their desires have the purest hearts, right? you know, it's what I witness people who are afraid of following their desires. I'm like, if you followed all your desires, all it would be was just this beautiful creation. You know what I mean? I may have just introduced like the heaviest thing right at the end there, but you know, we, we follow our desires. We understand who we are on that deep blueprint level by seeing what emerges from the space of of us just existing, right? And when we do that, then we can create all components work when we don't have that split perspective, right? All components work together for creation when all of our energy is gathered in that zero point. Very helpful. And Allison, I just want to thank you so much for sharing so much wisdom with us today and helping shift our perspective and helping us reach these quantum levels. I love you so, so much. And I'm so grateful for you. I love you too. (laughs) This was so much fun. Thank you for letting me be a kid in a candy store and come on here and just talk about like everything I love until (laughs) I'm tired and I need a nap now. (laughs) I have one last question for you. What will the world look like and how will the world be different when more people are playing with quantum time and quantum manifestation and manifesting their desires? And are we really far away from that reality or is it possible in the near future? Oh, I love it. I'm going to be circular here. (laughs) We're not far away from it at all. We're already in it. <laughs> We're already doing it. And collectively, there are so many who are existing in these frequencies who are deeply, deeply present and consciously creating the templates of the Garden of Eden. By the way, that third book is going to be all about the Garden of Eden, how to return to it. So you heard it here first, folks. But <laughs> But, you know, what the world looks like is essentially it's going to be a return to the Garden of Eden. And it's always a choice away. 
It's always just a choice away. It's not a timeline away. It's not a, oh, it's so far away. It's in the future. It's a choice away. We're in it when we know it within ourselves. And we lose it when we're not in it within ourselves, right? From day to day, I experience what it feels like. And then I move out of it. Two worlds, multiple worlds, okay? So we are always in it. And we are just just a choice, just an agreement away from existing in it consciously. And it is going to be absolute paradise. And it is paradise when we feel it, when we experience it in those moments that we do. It's paradise. And it's freedom. You know, we've been moving towards freedom. We're having a lot come up in our collective right now because we're trying to understand what freedom looks like. And, you know, freedom is an internal state. We will all exist in freedom. And when we do, we're going to perceive things very, very differently. You are worthy of all that you desire. It's time to take back your power and step into your role as a conscious creator and master of these realms. Remember that time is not a cage and time is not out of our control, but rather an illusion that we can explore and play with. I'll end today with a quote by Allison. As we learn to play within the realms of quantum time and bring these time-bending abilities into our physical reality, we will become more able to consciously choose. And we will see that only when we are deeply present are we truly choosing and in full mastery of our choice. From a deep level of presence, we can know eternity.